Welcome, good evening. This is nutritional pharmacist Melissa Galladay. I am a registered pharmacist with a passion for nutrition. And today's topic is actually going to be medical ethics. And before we get launched into that, I just want to encourage you that if you like this video, go ahead and do so. If you don't like this video, let me know. And also, go ahead and post the city, state, and country you are watching this video from. We love to hear from you. And no matter when you end up watching this video, if you have a question or a comment, feel free to go ahead and leave that below. We love to hear from you and love to learn about how we can better serve you in general. So one of the things I saw out there, you know, I was dispensing anywhere between three to 800 scripts a day. And what I would see is people getting sicker and sicker. And we have a condition out there or a term, you can actually find it on Wiki, it's called um, medicalization. And what that really means is that we as a culture have now medicalized everything in the human process. So if your body's not running properly, we can put a label on it and call it a disease, a special disease too, right? So, um, you know, hypothyroidism, low functioning uh, thyroidism, you know, also could be called maybe, um, you know, Graves disease or various special labels that we like to put on disease. And the reality is, is that it's just a malfunction in the biochemistry of the body. So hyperthyroidism, hypothyroidism, they put these special labels on it. And like I said, Graves disease. And when you see situations like that, it's, it's just a label. But nevertheless, we've medicalized something that occurs in the body naturally if it doesn't have the proper nutrients or the body's inflamed and, and revved up. Another thing you'll see is that people we put labels on behaviors. So there's all this, um, you know, medical uh, in regards to emotional and um, mental behaviors. We can also put labels on those. So things such as ADHD, ADD, um, ODD, oppositional defiance <clears throat> disorder, uh, bipolar. And again, we're, we're categorizing uh, people's behavior. And to think that that's not subjective, of course, is not accurate. It's, it's a very subjective thing. One of us could go to one doctor, get a diagnosis, and then go to another doctor and get another diagnosis. So, you know, you see one doctor, they might say you're a depressive type, major depressive disorder, MDD, and you have obsessive compulsive disorder, OCD. And if you went to another doctor, you might, they might say, well, you're ADD. So it's so subjective. Yet the politics and the ethics behind this that I want to communicate on tonight's show is that it is subjective and you getting attached to your label or your disease, I highly discourage you from doing that. They're, they're all biochemical processes that are happening and they're also mental, emotional, and spiritual issues that are happening also. That's, that's our journey through this life. Is that, you know, all of these things are going on at once. So when you get a label, Please, you know, make sure it's a label that fits you. Make sure it's a label that you want to continue utilizing and wearing because there are so many options out there now for healing. There's so many different modalities. There's acupuncture, there's massage, there's physical therapy, there's really tuning into your biochemistry and mastering your biochemistry and then using all of these together in a symphony and that's, and that's what I have done personally and that's what anyone I know that has maintained health through their life, they have to use more than one tool to get there. And so those are the things I want you to think about. I also want to share a story that is a heartbreaker to me. I was brand new graduate in 1999 at school, um, post school, and I was working in Denver, Colorado, and a mother called in and told me, she was asking me these questions about uh, Focalin, and I was Googling it really quick, double checking everything, and I saw the date of birth for the patient. And the patient was probably four or five years old, and I think the patient was five. And the mother said, I asked the mother, I said, oh, is this date of birth right? Because it shocked me so much to see a dose, that kind of medication, an ADD medication used on a, somebody so young. And I asked the mother, I said, is this accurate? Is this the date of birth of your, of your child? And she said, yes. And, and I was floored. I had never seen that in my practice up to that point. And so I asked her, ma'am, you know, why, do you, why did you think your daughter had ADD? Why did you take her to the doctor? And the mom responded and replied, well, when I sit her in front of the television, she won't just sit there and watch TV. And this is a five-year-old child. 
and I know that many of you, it's it's a horrible thing, right? Because four-year-old children, five-year-old children are meant to have a lot of energy. So we take this rambunctious, curious nature, the inability to sit still in classroom settings, and we actually manipulate it through psychoactive drugs. And these, this is something that has to stop. And the only way it's going to stop is by parents becoming very involved in their children's lives. Children are meant to be active at that age, and they need a lot of activity, physical, mental, they're curious, they're learning everything about life. So that's the end of today's topic, medical ethics for this evening. Again, it's always a pleasure to be here and I look forward to seeing you all next time. Bye-bye.